In this video, we're going to go through another example of an SN1 reaction with rearrangement. So as an exercise, you might try pressing pause at the moment, try to figure out what the product of this reaction is, and work on it by yourself. And when you're ready, press play, and we can go through it. Okay, I'm going to draw out the product of this reaction, and then we can go through the mechanism for how this reaction actually happens. So let's draw it out here. C, L, and that. This should be our major product here. And you may or may not also draw out this as a minor product. So you'd have a methyl group here and a chlorine. This, this would be minor. Uh, but this should be your major, major product. Okay. Now let's talk about how this happens and, and the mechanism for how this happens. And before we do that, let's let's first of all just figure out the bonds that form and break here so that we're really keeping track of everything which changes. Everything which changes in our molecule so that we know exactly what to keep track of here. So here we've got, let's draw in some, some hydrogens, CH3. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I actually know how this happens. So I am going to five, six. So notice the numbering is a little bit weird. One, two, four, five, six, three. Not one, two, three, four, five, six. So I said I'm cheating a little bit on numbering, but we'll go through it and we'll understand at the end how this reaction happens. Okay. So what bonds are forming here? What bonds are breaking? Well we have certainly broken the and we should actually oh before I forget mention also that we're forming water so we broke carbon 2 to oxygen that's clear we clearly form C3 to Cl uh, anything else different about carbon 1 no carbon 1 is the same but carbon 2 besides having broken off this oxygen carbon 2 is different and that it has a new bond to carbon 4. So we formed a bond between carbon 2 and carbon 4. This is new. That wasn't there before. And other than that, carbon 2 is the same other than breaking oxygen and forming carbon. Let's look at carbon 3. Carbon 3, we said that we formed carbon to chlorine and it's also not bonded to carbon 4 anymore. This bond was broken. So we've broken carbon 3 to carbon 4. And also, this is not as interesting, but we also broke HCl and we formed hydrogen to oxygen. So we went from OH to H2O. Okay, and these are all the bonds that form and break in this reaction. These, this is what happens. Okay, so then let's think about what could happen in this, in this mechanism. And we'll do it step by step. Now remember that OH has got a pair of electrons, two in fact, and our HCl is going to be polarized towards chlorine. Our HO is going to be polarized towards oxygen. That has to do with the electronegativities. And our most nucleophilic atom here is oxygen. The lone pair is going to attack the hydrogen of the chlorine. So let's call this um, arrow A, we'll call this arrow B. So this is going to be an acid base reaction. Now, what's happening in arrow A? Well, we're forming hydrogen to oxygen. And that's it. In arrow B, we're breaking hydrogen to chlorine. So let's draw out what that product would look like. It would look like this. So O and H, and then we've got another H, and then a lone pair on oxygen, positive charge, and then we have Cl minus, it's going to have a new lone pair on it that didn't have before, and the lone pair can go there. Okay, and um, so we have a positive charge on our oxygen, it went from having two lone pairs to having one, so let's just redraw something here. Okay, good. So then the next step, and we said this is an SN1 reaction, right? So we're going from OH, which is a really bad leaving group, so OH minus is a bad leaving group and but we protonate it we add acid it turns into a good leaving group and why is that well 
it's a weak base, a weak base. So the weaker the base, the better the leaving group. So since we're doing an SN1 reaction, the next step in this reaction is going to be a loss of our leaving group. So we can call this arrow C. And actually, you know what? I should really draw in that methyl group there, carbon 7. OK, so arrow C, we're going to break carbon 2 to oxygen. That's happening in arrow C. So I'll draw that out. OK. And what's that going to do? Well, it's going to be giving us, uh, we're going to be taking a pair of electrons from the carbon-oxygen bond and putting it onto the oxygen. And therefore, this carbon, carbon-2, is going to be bereft of electrons. It's going to become a carbocation. And remember that this is the slow step in the, e, in the, sorry, the E1 and the SN1 reaction, is the leaving group leaves, because we have to form a very unstable carbocation. OK, so we form water and OH and H. And this is a new lone pair that wasn't there before. And now water is neutral. OK, and one, two, three. This is where we come to the part where we need to think about rearrangements. So we have a new carbocation, which is here. This is a carbocation. Anytime you form a carbocation, the good question is to ask is what type of carbocation is it? And to remember the order of stability of carbocations. Remember that tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more, much more stable than primary. So this is carbocation stability. And here we have a secondary carbocation, which is not at the top in terms of the types of carbocations we have. So the question is, is there a possibility for rearrangement? So we need to look at the neighbors, the neighbors and ask yourself, what type of, could we possibly have a rearrangement? So neighbor number one, so the carbon sort of next door to our, we can call this our alpha carbon, the carbon that's the carbocation. This beta carbon here, the CH3, it could migrate an H to give a primary carbocation. And that's really all that it could do. It could donate an H to give a primary carbocation. And that, hopefully you can see, would be disfavored. Why? Because primary is less stable than secondary. So that's not going to happen. We're not going to draw that. So that is not going to occur. If we look at the other neighbor, we could we have three carbons attached to this carbon, carbon number three. So this could migrate carbon to give a tertiary carbocation. Oh, I didn't say what type of carbon this is. This is a quaternary carbocation, uh, sorry, quaternary carbon. So quaternary carbon could migrate a carbon to give a tertiary carbocation. OK, so certainly this would be favored. If we could do this migration, this is going to be favored. So the question is, what type of migration should we do? And there certainly is one possibility, and that is to migrate the methyl group here, the CH3. And we could do this. Uh, we could take a pair of electrons here and migrate it to carbon 2. And that would give us a tertiary carbocation as well as a new CH3 here. And then that chloride ion, which is present, could then trap our carbocation. And, and this would lead to our, our major product. Now, there is one problem with that. If you note our two products, one is this minor product, the cyclobutane, and one is the cyclopentane. The problem with our cyclobutane is that there is ring strain here. Remember ring strain? Remember how the ideal bond angle is 109.5 degrees, and in butane, the angle here is about 90 degrees. So 
this has a tremendous amount of ring strain in it. So there's actually, this is actually not the desired or ideal product for this rearrangement reaction. There is a way to do a bond migration which doesn't involve um, keeping or holding on to the cyclobutane ring, and, and we're going to show it here. So this might happen as a minor product, but it's not going to be the major product. So there's actually a different migration which occurs not from C7. So let's do, let's try and show what that, that migration might be. So let's draw in what we could do. If you look closely, we've got carbons 4, 5, and 6. And carbons 4 and 6 are essentially the same. We have a plane of symmetry in this molecule, and carbon 4 and carbon 6 are identical. And so between carbon 3 and carbon 4, we've got a pair of electrons. And it's just easier to do carbon 3 and carbon 4 because they're closer. Um, let's just sort of give ourselves a little bit of space here. So, so between carbon 3 and carbon 4, we could take that pair of electrons and move it to carbon 2. And what would this product look like? Uh, let's draw this out. Maybe we'll draw the ugly version first and then we can always make it look pretty later. And in this case, I think it's very also very helpful to to just draw redraw everything. And by everything I mean including the arrows and everything else that's a part of this molecule. CH3 positive charge. Okay. So What's happening in this arrow? We are breaking uh, carbon three to carbon four. So we're gonna call this arrow D, okay? Arrow D, we are breaking carbon three to carbon four. And we are gonna form a bond between carbon four and carbon two. So let's break, let's break this bond and this pair of electrons is gonna to go to carbon two, and maybe we can draw it colored like that. Okay, so that's what's occurring. And if we were to now think about what happens to this charge here on carbon two, well, it's no longer trivalent. It now has a full octet, so we can get rid of the positive charge here. Whereas carbon three went from having a full valent shell to now it's going to have a positive charge. So we are also breaking, um, so we're breaking carbon three to carbon four, we're forming carbon two to carbon four here. Okay, and so this gives us this product which we could redraw, It'd be nice to, you know, we draw this triple sign to show what it looks like here, CH3, positive charge, and, and so this is four, five, six, seven. So one, two, four, five, six, three, seven. Okay, that's what it looks like. And there's really just one last thing to do, right? If you look at our to-do list, all the bonds we need to form and break. We have just one last thing. and It's this trailing uh, chloride ion, which is always the last thing to remember to draw in, isn't it? So chloride ion is here, and it's got four pairs of electrons, and we can say that this is arrow E. So an arrow E, we're forming a bond between carbon three and chlorine, and that, that leads us to our major product up here. So that is how this reaction works. We're forming the carbon to chlorine bond. So this is another example of an SN1 reaction with rearrangement. Remember, one of the key factors here, the two key factors we need to think about are carbocation, stability, and also ring strain. So breaking open this bond, this carbon three to carbon four bond, 
allows us to break open our strained cyclobutane ring. So there's strain here to form a five-membered ring, which there's a considerably less strain. In fact, you can essentially think of it, actually it's much less, much less strain. So ring strain is going to be a driving force too. So keep that in mind when you're doing uh, SN1 and E1 reactions that ring strain can also be an important factor, not only carbocation stability. So we'll do one more example of an SN1 reaction with a rearrangement and then it'll involve some silver salts. So till next time.